huge election year in Africa this year. 2024 is a big one. It's the year when Africans get to decide who is in power. What do we need to do to make sure that we move in a positive direction? Of course, we need to take decisions. We need to head to the polls. We need to make sure that uh, we hold our governments accountable. Of course, another thing is that uh, Africa has the biggest youth population across the world. But is it any use if we have the biggest youth population, but they're not taking a stand and making decisions to participate in the election processes. That really is what we're talking about in this hour of the show. Glenn Mbani, political campaign expert from Shikamo Political Campaign and Advisory Services, is here in studio with us to chat to us about how exactly and why, first of all, why the youth isn't participating as well as they should be in our election processes, but how we can actually get them to participate as well. That's a very, very important thing. Glenn, thank you so much for coming to uh, Channel Africa. How are you this morning? Thank you so much, Palisa and Benjamin. Uh, it's a good, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be on your show this morning. I appreciate it. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. We always love having guests come in and uh, chat to us in studio. It is a big year. We've seen it already. We've had a couple of elections already in the uh, um, in the continent, and so many others that are still coming up. Uh, why is it important, first of all, for us to pay attention to the election processes? Uh, thank you so much. Um, elections are a critical component in public life of every country. Mm -hmm. Elections achieve two things. One, they assist us in terms of uh, identifying and seconding people into public affairs. The mm -hmm. people who are going to be running your day-to-day -day affairs have to go through an election process. Secondly, those people are the ones who determine the policies that are going to be used in terms of how a country is going to be run and what are the decisions that are going to be made. So every time when I hear people saying I'm apolitical, I basically say there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Every person in life is affected by politics. So elections matter because this is where how you are governed and decisions affect your life. Mm -hmm. So it's very crucial for us to pay attention to it. But part of the challenge that has happened over the years is that agents or participation in elections has receded. Mm -hmm. Citizens are no longer willing to participate in elections. The numbers across Africa in terms of voter participation are sliding low. Yeah. And that begs the question for us to ask why. Mm -hmm. And why we are, we are confronted with this pro problem, the largest demographic, which is the youth, are the largest number of people who are not participating in elections. Right. And that is the critical point to say they are mortgaging their fate in the hands of individuals who, if we look at in terms of life, mm -hmm. they are not going to be there. So decisions are being made on their behalf. So basically right. they're not backing up their own interests. Because they're not, they're they're not backing basically up Basically they're interests. asking other people to look after their own um, state, state of affairs, basically. Yes, yes. I mean, at the beginning of the year, Africa was slated to have 19 African uh, elections, mm. general and presidential elections. That's still questionable because, you know, sometimes in Africa, you can say you've got elections still coming up, but, you know, you have postponements. We've seen that has been a, a recent trend when it comes to elections. Uh, you know, a colleague of mine was saying to me earlier on, why should the youth vote? Because, I am not that you know, colleague, by no, the way. No, no, no. It's not <laughs> funny. <laughs> And saying, you know what, the elections get rigged anyway. Why should they go out and vote? Because, you know what, the election processes in Africa are not really democratic. They're not fair. They're not free. Um, how critical is the youth vote? Because all those circumstances kind of feed into the reasoning why they actually shouldn't vote or shouldn't go out to vote and vote. The greatest rigging machinery in Africa is not voting. Yeah, mm. absolutely. If a citizen decides not to vote, you are contributing to rigging an election. How so? In the sense that, one, if we look at how our elections are being run across the continent, most of these elections are now polling station based. When you're saying an election is polling station based, it means it has got a voter's row for the polling station, it has got a, it has got a cut number. So, for example, you can have a polling station that has got a thousand people. And on that polling station, you are going to get ballot papers that are in line with the number of people there, you're going to get serialized ballot papers that are there. So if you don't go and vote, let's take, for example, how they assume that ballot boxes are going to be stuffed. It, it, it no longer happens. 
Mm. An election is rigged a year before polling day. And you know right. when an election is rigged, wow. it's rigged through the voters' roll. Okay. So if a voters' roll, if you don't go and register, so by the time that we go on polling day, it's already done. Mm -hmm. Meaning that 1,000 people were supposed to be in a polling station. If anyone wants to rig an election, either they are going to distribute your names to different areas so that when you get on polling day, you're not going to vote, or on the day of the election, it's either the process is slow, or it's cumbersome, or you're frustrated. But that process of rigging an election by stuffing ballot boxes, it's no longer the norm that takes place. Mm -hmm. There is now a more nuanced and sophisticated way of doing it. So whoever does not decide to vote, they're enablers. Mm -hmm. They're enablers to the rigging process. Let's talk a little bit about how critical then is the youth vote considering uh, the demographic dynamics. So the youth vote, let me give you an example. Let me draw it so that you see an example in this country. So in this country, you have got 62 million people. South Africa. South Africa. So okay. 62 million people, that is the population. Ideally, you're supposed to have 42 million people on the voters' roll. But currently, you've got 27. Mm. While you had 27 million people in this last election, you had 16 million going to vote. Let's juxtapose it with the level of unemployment. You have got 42 percent level of unemployment yeah. in essence which goes in the region of about five million people that are unemployed and most of these unemployed are graduates that are coming out of school young people who don't have jobs in essence they should be the ones actively participating in decision making so that it affects and influences their day-to-day -day life let's look at what happened the voter registration leading up to the 2020 2024 election with one million people registering to vote and funny enough, we had 1.5 million people not voting compared to 2019, meaning that we had a large number of young people, they went on to register, but they did not vote. Mm. So we can't just entirely blame them for that, because in my world, not voting is also participating. It's a statement that politicians need to decode. When someone does not participate in an election, what are they saying? Mm. What is it that it means? And that leads to the appetite that is slowly increasing of young people being amenable to cause. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that because that's part of our questioning because there have been multiple coups and it seems like this is a stalemate in those countries where this coup seems like military control is the talk of the town in those countries and the transition process is taking forever as well which also entrenches a historical element to what we've seen as a, a coup style led um a government we'll talk a little bit about that but also we've seen young participation in countries like senegal we've seen uh, the new president being a young man is, is that an indicator of a new appetite of a different kind of uh, uh, you know leader or also are the electorate starting to see youth participation and governance as significant but we'll touch on those issues after the break Speaking about the youth vote in elections here on the African continent, with a large youth population, there still is a very unhealthy level of election participation from the youth population. Still joining us here to speak about this very important issue, Glenn Mbane, political campaign expert from Chicago Political Campaign and Advisory Services in studio with us. Well, you know, before the break, we spoke a little bit about why it's important for the youth to actually participate in the election process process but there's also a different side of youth participation and that is youth leadership you spoke about coups before we went to the break we've seen some coups led by young military men is this an indication of the youth interest in politics uh, you know youth that actually take the lead within the election processes so if we look at the pattern of coups that is taking place in west africa and central africa you need to look at it within the historical context of these countries. Mm. Let's give a look at the example of Senegal. Senegal has always had a very rich and robust uh, democratic ethos in sure, the country. Absolutely. And you look at in terms of each and every time if when Abdullah Wade wanted to try to have a third term, young people turned out mm -hmm. and this time around they turned out. So the country has a culture of alternating leaders a culture of participating in election. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we need to be very, very clear about is that a participation of a citizen in public life has to do with the level of urgency. Mm -hmm. And urgency is not 
um, something that happens automatically. It's a taught value. Mm. And this is what we need to be able to deal with here is to say, are our citizens, particularly the young people, understanding what it means to be able to participate in public life? Mm -hmm. It might then require us, even in our education system, for us to be able to drill it in terms of what does it mean? Because if you look at our young people, if you look at our education system, people start interacting with elected officials when they're adults. Yeah. Whoever lead them at the school level, at, mm -hmm. the, at, at, at whatever high school level, that process of decision making, they are appointed. At university level, if someone is lucky to go to your university or a technical college, that's when they start seeing the election of the student representative council. But that form of understanding that one, I have to be elected, two, I can lose and I can concede that culture has to be inculcated. And that is what is causing a larger challenge. And so when you see in, in, in Central Africa and in whatever, in those countries where they have had democratic whatever, they've also had stalemates mm -hmm. where you have a coup, a military leader coming in. Once a country has a coup, the appetite for a coup to take place again, it's, 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 it's automatic. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have another coup because the military has already interfered in the public life of a country. Let's talk about the coup culture because, you know, now we, we see that it, it, it's going to become a, a dominating feature in some African countries, right? Because there's a pattern of um, a regular occurrence of these particular coups. But the, the, the coup men in some of these countries are young people. Does that give us an indication of anything specific when it comes to issues of governance? Or is it something that that has always been there where young military men are the interrupters of a governance system? So cause are a result of a number of factors. I think um, the military, once it is exited from being under civilian control, what it basically means is that um, the rule of law has been affected. The constitutional order has been messed up with. In most instances, whenever there's a coup in a country, you'll find that the top military guys, because they are benefiting, they are part of the patronage, they are not usually the actors. The middle-level military insecurity, they're disgruntled, they're not being seen, so they decide that we're going to take over. Once they take over, this is where the disruption takes place. So it's not in any way that because it's young people who are doing it, therefore it's a sign that youth are participating. No, okay. it's simply... A, a system that is dysfunctional, which young people who are energetic are taking advantage of mm -hmm. and disrupting. But it's not in any way, a coup is bad. Yeah. It's not good for any country. All countries that have experienced coups, they never ever recover in terms of how they are governed. Because you you have you have crossed the line, you have opened the door that you can't be able to deal with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's come back to youth participation. And I want us to, uh, because the most recent, of course, is South Africa. And if you look at the history of South Africa, the, you know, 30 years of democracy, of course, a democracy that was fought really hard with high active youth participation fighting for the freedom. And we've seen things like the 1976 youth uprising. The youth had a big role to play when it comes to South Africa receiving its democratic uh, government. So coming back 30 years later, we're seeing the complete opposite. In 1976, the youth were fed up, so they participated. But in 2000, I mean, in, in 2024, the youth, the youth are, are fed, fed up, up but they're anything. not participating. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at so, that, so, you know, just so, the position. So, so when citizens don't participate, it creates high levels of insecurity. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there is, there is a theory in politics. When citizens are unhappy, they either voice or the exit. Mm. The way in which citizens voice, they voice through protest, they voice through elections. Mm -hmm. When they are no longer using those tools, they exit from public life. Mm. When they exit from public life, the reason why we ask people to go for elections is that we want a normal constitutional order mm -hmm. where people know what is happening, there's predictability, the markets, the environment. This sort of a context is very, very un, un, unhealthy because you have, particularly for South Africa, you have the largest number of people not voting. Mm. 
Yeah. Meaning that you have got a government that has been elected by a minority. Mm -hmm. Yet the majority, you don't know what they think about the officials. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they think about the politics. And there lies a problem. But then also there's a culture of enabling the status quo. Enabling the status quo. But if those people who are quiet, mm -hmm. they reach a threshold of unhappiness, mm. what are they likely to do? This is the, this is the million dollar question. So the discussion out of this election, in my view, should be less about coalitions and more about the citizens who did not turn up. Yeah. And I always encourage journalists to say the story in an election like this one is not in who won. The story is the number of people from 16 million, from 42 million to 16 million. Mm. How many people did not vote? We have got the large number. So if, if not voting was on the ballot, not voting would have won this right. election. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Interesting conversation, actually getting different views, a different idea of why voting um, absence is such a critical thing to the democratic process with Glennon Bani, who's joining us. He's a campaign, uh, uh, political campaign expert, to be more specific, from Chicago Political uh, Campaign and Advisory Services. Let's talk a little bit about the significance of the youth vote that actually pitches does it actually have a significant contribution to the outcome? I'm always interested in that one because I think most of the time it's easier to speak about the youth that don't participate because that's a generality that we've already um, summed up in our own heads as Africans. But how significant is that youth vote? So, 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 so youth have got a critical role in an election cycle. One, they play a role as volunteers in a campaign. Okay. If you're running a campaign and you want to target and mobilize, the most effective group that you can bring together are young people. So they play that role. Number two, because young people are affected by a number of issues, they also play an activist role during an election cycle. Thirdly, we're seeing a large number of young people getting into leadership positions, mm -hmm. occupying mm -hmm. leadership positions. So that's very crucial in terms of those who turn up. Number four, they play a very crucial role when it comes to manning of polling stations, uh, providing oversight and assisting. The young are critical in those key positions when it comes to the election process. Where they are falling short is in turning out in their numbers for them to be able to vote. If you look at the number of young people, you know you can actually end up with a government of young people. Mm -hmm. yes. Assuming that you have got young candidates, young people decide to go and vote at the end of the day you find that you can end up with a totally diff different uh, age group in terms of people in power but unfortunately because of the challenges of being able to encourage young people to go and vote it becomes more cumbersome mm -hmm. to get young people to get to the polls can we use senegal as an example um of um a different type of uh outcome that we've seen in Africa, because while the, the predecessor of the current uh, president was trying to actually create an environment for another term of Mark presidency, Sali, uh -huh. yeah, Maki Sali, mm -hmm. um, the big response to that were young people, mm -hmm. but also you felt like even in the election process, young people took ownership on who uh, the new leader is. Uh, is that an example of kind of a trajectory that a country can actually take when young people um, are involved? Or is it difficult to say if we don't know the clear numbers of young people in that election? So, so that action in Senegal was not a once-off. It was not a popcorn event. It was something that you cultivate over time. So when I talk about the fact that agency is built, if you speak to individuals who are in Senegal, you look at the example of the Obi movement in Nigeria, even mm -hmm. though it didn't win. Mm -hmm. It's a process. It's the reason why we encourage entities like political parties to build structures is that you need to go on the ground, go in the village, go in the one, get young people to understand. You see our leaders there, they're taking us in the right there in the wrong direction. You don't do it a year before election. Mm -hmm. It's a five, six year process. You are talking to them. So it's an engagement. It's an engagement that is continuous. Mm -hmm. The difficult parties or political parties are approaching 
and cultivating that as and when elections come in. And young people are very, very resistant to that, to say you only think about us when it's election time. Mm. Let's look at this country. In two years' time, we are going to have local government elections. But let me tell you one thing. Political parties are going to disengage. Six months before local government elections, they go back to the people. So people have normalized that this relationship is quite abusive. Yeah, It's a relationship that comes in as and when people want something. It's very transactional. Mm. So for us to be able to get the high levels of agents in, in, in Senegal, like what we had in Senegal, you need to actively work with citizens in a continuous manner for you to be able to reap the result. There is no shortcut to getting citizens to get to the poll. Mm. Oh, well, you know what? It's not the, the last time. So in another couple of years, we'll be back here again to, in the elections in South Africa and, of course, uh, across uh, the, the, the continent as well. So how do we better engage? How do we bring the youth in now for the next cycle? So, so my view is... Across the world, the process of elections or the elections itself are confronted with the challenges of non-participation of youth. Yeah. I think we need to ask ourselves the questions, why are they not participating? I don't want to make assumptions. I think I've heard people saying, you know what, maybe you reach them on technology. Even when you use technology, they are not interested. <laughs> no, yeah, and no. you don't even know exactly where they are. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, what, what, what was that dance that you were talking about? Uh, the, you know, uh, I forgot what it's called. The one that the, 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 the ANC <laughs> had as part of their campaign. And it's, it's, a lot of the young yeah. people were saying, why, what, what would you vote for? They're like, yeah, uh, ANC. And like, why? Because of the dance. So we are assuming, are they on Twitter? Uh -huh. Are they on TikTok? I am now being told that there are other platforms which are not TikTok and Twitter where they are actively participating. Mm. If you want to see that the youth can mobilize, let me tell you one example. Uh -huh. You know there is that thing that they were talking about where young people gather on their own at a mall and then they... Yes. What is it called? Oh, those uh, young... We did a story. Well, yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. They have got their own ways of... If we are able to understand yeah. that language get into that space, make that space understand the elections, then we can say we are mobilizing. That's definitely a rally on its own. That's definitely a rally on its own. <laughs> but imagine they are able to communicate and converge at a mall yes. and cause chaos at a mall, which means that they have got their own means. It, it means that if I am a candidate, I'm not the best person to go and talk to them. Yeah. I need to identify my representative amongst the youth. But that was also interesting. We're also seeing a, a, a very different campaigning process. I don't know if it works to its essence because sometimes it's driven by um, a pseudo pop culture, right? Um, the use of influencers. I don't know if that's what you're talking to or do you think we need communal representatives? I, I think we need to find out wh where they are. Currently now in, in our work, we believe that the methods of campaigning, people are tired of them. Mm -hmm. People are tired of posters, people are tired of rallies, people are tired of, okay, fine, I can bring in a musician and then they come. People <laughs> yeah. now know all those tricks. Yeah. Yeah. So what it means now is you need to go back to the drawing board and sit down now and say, okay, fine. You didn't participate in the last election. Mm -hmm. What is the best way of getting you to participate? We need them to talk to us yeah. and know, understand yeah. what the language is and use the language that they appreciate. You know, I, I agree with you with the fact that people are tired of the methodologies that have been used. You know, the, the big um, clickbait is, yeah. uh, you know, where people um, or where political parties give people food and they say, you know what, vote for us. Here's yeah. uh, a package of vegetables. There was a, a video I saw of a girl carrying a whole lot of vegetables in a packet and she was saying, you know what, the ANC has given me uh, this uh, particular packet of vegetables, but I am voting for the MK. Exactly. <laughs> so, 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 so the voter knows that during election pe period, it's Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get everything, the goodies yeah. that I want. But at the end of the day, I'll make up my own mind and my own decision. Or not even participate. Or, or not even participate. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, what shocks me in this election is... You know, having one million people going to register, and then just a few weeks, a month after that, they just decide not to. It's a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. It's a conscious decision to say, I'm just going to register. And the people, it seems like they're waiting for something. 
And also the other thing about the young people is that they are not only fed up of the ruling parties, mm -hmm. they are also equally fed up of the opposition. If yes. they wanted the opposition, there's an array of opposition political right. parties in this country. <laughs> yeah. Why did they not go to them? Mm. Absolutely. It means even the opposition parties are not as attractive as they think they are to the young people. You know, that's a very interesting one because the day of elections, I was getting a temporary ID, right? And I was at the Department of Home Affairs on mm -hmm. that on on that particular day, you know. Gra gratefully, you know, we had that opportunity to have our Department of Home Affairs open in South Africa, which I thought was fantastic. And there were a lot of mothers who brought their daughters, who to brought the their sons, to actually get temporary ID mm -hmm. cards to actually participate because they say you registered but you're sleeping and you're not going to the polls exactly. and that just shows that we all have a responsibility of that voter education even from a community level yeah and 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 and, and, and more importantly i think is one of the, that we need to teach each and every individual what is it to be a good citizen what are the responsibilities yeah. of a good citizen a good citizen ensures that where i stay it's clean a good citizen make sure that security issues, if there's something that is, happens in my community, I go and report. A good citizen plays a very pivotal role in terms of when there's an election, I have to vote. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is that we only have the mature going to vote because they understand the implications on their pay slip. Yeah. They understand it because they're confronted with a lot of bills. But are we teaching young people to be good citizens? Mm -hmm. No, no, we're not. We're not. Well, it's definitely an issue and a conversation that we can take for another yeah, two hours. Absolutely. It's really, really intriguing because this is the reality of where we find ourselves right now on the African continent. But thank you so much, Glenn, for your time this morning. It's been great chatting to you. And uh, this has definitely been a very, very uh, eye-opening conversation indeed. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Benjamin. I appreciate it and I look forward maybe this might add one or two voters. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Ken Mpane, <laughs> political campaign expert from Shikamo Political Campaign and Advisory Services. Ken yeah. Mpane joining us in studio this Fantastic. morning. Fantastic. That's a beautiful conversation indeed. Before we say goodbye, where can people find more on the Shikamo work that you do and where can people so, find so, you so, as well? So we, 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 are, we provide only our services to political parties. Okay. Okay. So we are hired across our Africa to run and manage political campaigns. Don't ask me why that's in South Africa. Where we're going to discuss that. <laughs> uh -huh. So that's what Tell we do. Us who. <laughs> so, so we provide that service. But I know there are people who might be interested in getting to the field. Every year we run an executive course with the Investor of Cape Town on how to run effective campaigns. We also run it with the African Leadership University in Rwanda. So those are opportunities for people to learn because we want more people mm -hmm. to get into the campaign sector. Part of our problem is we've got many, many people who are coming in and running campaigns. Sure. They're not experts. They don't understand data, how to deal with yeah. it. Political campaigning is a science. And we believe that we want more young people at universities. Yeah. Unfortunately, our investors are not teaching it. That is why we're trying to grow sure, that sure. market in Africa. So where do, where do we go to find out more about Shikamo? You go to our website, www.shikamo.africa. You can get more details there. You can get in touch with us there on the platform. There are ways in which you can contact us. There's an email. Awesome. And you can get in touch even on our social media handles. You can get in touch with us. Cool. Let's go back to the music. You heard that. If you want to find out a little bit more about these interesting insights on elections, Hang out with Shikamo there on their website.